Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Today we've got a crazy story of destroying a bathroom, but first a story from Resident Lead 8689, Hacker gets more than free food. So I received an email from Grubhub saying, thanks for your order, enjoy. And I'm thinking, I haven't used Grubhub in like a year. The total was $93.73. Someone hacked my Grubhub account. My PayPal was connected to my Grubhub account. The email on my Grubhub account was then changed, so I was unable to do anything except remove my PayPal information from it, and that was it. I spent countless hours talking to customer service for both PayPal and Grubhub, hoping to get my money back. I'm a single mom who lives alone, and I can't afford to be losing that kind of money. I'm broke at the moment, and now I'm even more broke. But there's a silver lining. Before the hacker changed the email address to her own, the confirmation email from Grubhub saying enjoy not only gave me the hacker's phone number, but it gave me her address as well. Nothing makes me more petty than someone stealing money from someone who's already struggling to make ends meet. So I put her home address on blast with my friends on Facebook. They anonymously sent her things like chocolate boxes, stink bombs that go off when you open the box, and other things. Don't steal, it's rude. How low down do you have to be to go and steal somebody's Grubhub account? Also, how dumb do you have to be? Like, chances are maybe the cops won't track them down, but you have their phone number and address and proof that they stole from you. What more information do you need to give to the cops for them to get some kind of charge? If you say, I literally have this person's address they changed it to, their phone number and everything, are the cops going to really turn that down? Do you guys think the cops would do anything about this? Is it worth the effort? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Exotic Imagination 95 Karen neighbor always yelling at her kids first thing in the morning. So this woman in my building every day must wake up with a taste for blood or something because she's always screaming at the top of her lungs at these poor kids. They're like 10 to 12. I've seen them in the halls. They seem like nice kids. I don't really think there's a reason to scream at the top of your lungs at them every day. But they're not my kids, so I don't say anything. Today, though, she was yelling at them about something about back to school. I don't know, it's August. Anyway, I'm tired of her waking me up yelling at these kids. And I'm sure they don't like it much either. I grew up in a house like that. I know all it's going to do is push them away. They'll be gone from her at some point more than likely. So today I yelled down at her. It's been like three hours. Could you maybe give your kids a rest and the rest of us as well? She yelled up, go freak yourself. Okay, so me not being petty at all went, all right, okay. And then proceeded to play the heaviest BS metal I could. Whether I knew the song or not, I just played it out of tune, in tune, bad, good, it didn't matter. And I just ripped it. Who cares how bad I sounded? Then after I was done, I yelled out the window and went, that was at three, I can go to 11. And I went to work. I don't know. There's a lot better ways to deal with your kids than yelling at them all day. Hopefully she remembers being told to shut up by someone almost half her age and chills on those kids. Honestly, at some point, like, do you guys think that OP should start considering calling like CPS or an equivalent? I'm not saying OP has to go over there and knock on the door and say, oh, is everything okay? But like, at some point, if this lady just keeps screaming at their kids every single day, should you start like recording it, start building up a case and report this to the authorities who can maybe step in and help out those kids? Or is that just overstepping your boundaries, neighbor or not? Our next story is from Raz Jamuka. Lady gets the seat behind me. My ex-wife and I were standing in line at the airport of our honeymoon destination, waiting to get checked in and return home. There was quite a bit of a line already, but we were lucky enough to find ourselves near the front of it. When there was only one couple in front of us, two fancy looking ladies, think Hyacinth Bucket, marched in between the two lines to the front and smugly stood between the lines, being sure their important looks would get them served first. They tried to cut in front of the couple ahead of us, but the young couple was quicker and was able to block the older ladies in their path with a surfboard and get checked in. The looks thrown left and right to everyone around from these ladies were dripping of the contempt for the young couple and everyone else in line. The two praying mantises at this point start eyeballing me and my ex-wife because we're now their competition for the two meter dash to the desk. They ever so slightly start shuffling forward to get a bit closer 
At this point, the accumulated stress of traveling and my lack of patience with entitled people was getting the better of me, so I asked what they thought they were doing and that the back of the line is, well, at the back of the line. The head Karen, although perfectly capable of understanding and speaking English, resorts to saying a few demeaning sounding things in her Slavic language and proceeds to look me up and down like a piece of poop. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a piece of crap, but that doesn't mean she gets to look at me with that much disgust. So instead of continuing the non-existent conversation in English, I switch to my dialect so she can have a taste of her own medicine. I calmly said a few choice sentences to her, carefully picking my words to make it sound as horrible as possible, fully realizing that only my ex-wife is capable of understanding me and that my dialect sounds like someone having a horrible stroke which seemed to make secondary Karen realize it wasn't worth it and she kind of ashamed, started tugging on head Karen on her sleeve to move to the back of the line. Some more things were said by her, some more dirty looks thrown, but they retreated to the end of the line and we got checked in. I'm sitting in the plane's middle row, aisle seat, and who walks in? The two Karens. We spot each other, glares from her, grins from me, and it turns out head Karen's seat is the one behind me. From the moment we were off the ground, I reclined my seat all the way back, having dinner like an ancient Roman. If only they could have hung my meal from the ceiling so I could have picked it like grapes off a vine. Four hours into the flight or so, my back started to hurt, but I knew I wasn't going to let it stop me. I'll just stretch it out, unlike her legs, and sit out the remaining two hours of the flight. No looks were given by her when we left the plane, and as someone who never reclines their seat, I felt like a boss for having gone through with it all the way to the end. All I can say here is I fully support OP and their actions. Anybody that like tries to devise a plan and complain in order to skip lines and get ahead of people that they have no right to skip ahead of, they deserve to have no leg room for a few hours. Our next story is from Careless Occasion. Estranged father called the police on us while grieving our mother's death. Fine, you can clean everything up. My mother, who I was very close with, passed away suddenly from COVID three days before Christmas last year, 2021. I live on the other side of the country, and my brother lives on the other side of the state from where our mom lived. So we arrived the next day and stayed at her home, our former childhood home, to try and deal with everything surrounding a sudden death, as well as take care of her cats. My father, we'll call him S, has been estranged since I was about 12 years old, and I haven't spoken to him since then. He was not and is not a nice person, so I'm definitely not missing out on anything. My parents never bothered to divorce. Why? I have no idea. On to the petty revenge. A few days after my mom passed, I woke up at around 11am due to being in a different time zone. My brother is still asleep as he works the night shift. This is relevant, I promise. After my brief morning routine, I noticed a police car in the driveway and head outside to find out what's going on. The officer asked if I lived there, so I explained the above story to him as why I was there. At this point, I'd started crying having to go through everything again. The officer then asked if I knew someone named S, which completely floored me. I told him yes, I did. He's my father, who I've not spoken to in over 15 years. The officer then tells me that S called the police, saying that someone was trespassing on his property and wanted them out. The someone being my brother and I. Apparently S came to my mom's house early that morning and no one answered the door as we were both asleep. He assumed we were ignoring him and called the police. My brother has his number blocked, but he called and left a voicemail saying he would get back with the police to bust the door down, which we heard later that day. Since my parents never divorced and my mom's will was almost 30 years old at this point, that meant the house was legally his now. After the officer explained to me the situation, I see S pull in the driveway. The officer tells me that I didn't need to interact with him at all and said I could wait inside while he spoke with him. S ended up giving us until the end of the day to leave the premises. So my brother and I, along with a couple of family members that lived nearby, helped us collect some of our childhood possessions and photo albums and left. I flew home the next day. What S arrived to the next day know he was there, he texted me asking where my mom kept her cash, was a disaster. My mom had two elderly cats that had issues with finding the litter box at times, so there was cat pee and cat poop scattered throughout the house that we didn't bother to clean up. 
There was decomposing food in the kitchen, a couch was overturned in the living room, we had to flip it to catch one of the cats, the trash hadn't been taken out, there were dirty dishes in the sink. On top of that, he now had a house with over 30 years of accumulated belongings that he now had to clean and empty by himself. My brother and I had planned on cleaning as well as we could, as well as start the process of preparing the house to sell, but thanks to S calling the police on us, that was now all his problem. He ended up sending my brother a letter through a family member complaining about how messy we left the house and how much money he had to spend to empty the property. It's shocking how actions have consequences. In a weird way, I wonder if this only brought OP and their brother closer? Maybe even some of the other family members as well? Maybe in a weird way it was actually nice just to have this remembrance that there are family members that do look out for OP, as much as the father wants to tear things down. Also, OP clarified in an edit that the cats are fine and in new homes. They didn't have to deal with the father at all, so the cats are okay. Our next story is from Electric Pharaoh. No TV for you, but TV for me. So this one was told to me by a friend recently. The petty revenge isn't his, but he did benefit from it. Some years back, when LCD and LED TVs were much more expensive than they are today, a local shop had a door crasher special on a particular model of flat screen. My friend was behind an older lady in line, they were only letting people in a few at a time to limit the chaos, and an impatient gentleman was behind him. The impatient guy starts getting rather pushy, trying to move up in line, and then when this doesn't work, starts badgering people to let him in sooner because he really needs that TV to watch the big game because his recently broke. Again, nobody wants to let him cut, so he starts insulting people and railing about how inconsiderate everyone is. Anyways, they let a few more people in, including the older lady, leaving my friend at the head of the line. A few minutes later, they let a few more in, that's my friend, the impatient gentleman, and a couple more. Impatient gentleman beelines for the TVs but finds the last one is already gone. My friend, who had hoped but not expected to grab one, grabs some other things and is heading for the checkout. When what does he see but the older lady at customer service returning a door crasher flat screen TV. He asks her if something's wrong with it, and she laughs and says, No, I just didn't want that jerk to get one, and they won't put it back on the shelf before the end of the night. My friend ended up talking to the girl at the customer service counter and getting that very same TV. I hope that jerk was telling the truth about his TV being broken. Honestly, that's another level of petty that I don't know if I would ever actually go to that extent. Like, yeah, if somebody annoyed me enough, I'd probably be like, you know, honestly, I hope that guy doesn't get a TV. But I don't know if I would go out of my way to lift that TV to the cashier, pay a couple hundred dollars, and then return it just to stick it to some jerk. Unbelievably next level. Our next story is from Cat Soup Time. Flower Thief is embarrassed. We discovered a man on our ring camera a few minutes after he'd walked down our driveway and taken a very large cutting off my newly bloomed dahlia. It was 9pm, just getting dark, and this seemed planned because who carries scissors in a bag around to steal flowers? I've been working on making my front yard prettier and my plants had finally started growing in and looking good. Even so, I would have gladly shared if he'd asked, that way I'd get to choose which stems and how many. Instead, he took the biggest stalk with the most blooms from the very center and left it so the cut was super obvious and ugly. I was pretty sure I recognized the man and it was a guy that I saw earlier in the day when I was watering. I remember it being odd that him and his wife walked by twice within only a few minutes. The next day, he and his wife and dog walked by again and I was able to verify it was him by his unique gait and long hair with a big bald spot in the middle. So I took cuttings from my garden and put up a sign on my front planter box. Free cuttings. Thanks to everyone except the long-haired balding man for not stealing my flowers. I put a lot of work into this garden, but I'm happy to share with those who ask. I've seen him three times since then and discovered that he lived at the end of our street. He wears a bandana now. If he's at our block party next month, I'll bring it up. You have to be legitimately shameless to go and steal somebody's flowers, cut them in their own yard. What an unbelievably first world thing to do. Walk down the street to your neighbor's house and cut up their plants to take for yourself. Our next story is from You're a Sweetheart. My teacher yelled at me so I told my mother. This happened when I, 15, was in grade 5. In South Africa, our school year starts in January and ends in December. This story took place around July. 
it's probably worth a note that I've only seen my mother lose her temper less than 10 times collectively. She's generally a very soft and calm person, this comes up later. My family and I had just gotten home from Germany because we were attending my brother's wedding. I arrived two days late, and so when my teacher was handing out maths homework booklets, I didn't get one. I was a pretty shy kid and didn't like asking for things, so every week, I would ask my mother to ask the parent group chat for a picture of that week's math homework. After two weeks, she asked why I didn't have a booklet, so I told her I wasn't given one after the holiday. She knows I'm an anxious person, so instead of telling me to ask my teacher myself, she wrote a note and told me to give it to her the next day. I did. Needless to say, Mrs. Karen was upset and yelled at me from across the room saying, You're such a useless child, why didn't you say anything? I honestly don't know why I got stuck with such a stupid class this year. Not to mention how your mother's been abusing the parent group chat every day for two weeks. I started to cry. She kept yelling at me for about two more minutes before telling me to go to every single one of the six classes in my grade and ask for a spare math booklet so I can photocopy it. I was still pretty teary-eyed and my eyes were red and puffy. I didn't want to get yelled at, so I just did what she said and thankfully, the nice teacher, Mr. Adamson, gave me his booklet and even later asked if I was okay. When I got home, my mom was just about to head off to buy some things at the mall. She told me that she wanted to hear how my day went and asked if I wanted to tell her on our way to the mall. I said sure. We got in the car and I told her everything that happened that day. I could feel the car get faster and her hands were shaking because she was gripping the steering wheel so firmly. When we got home, she immediately got on a phone call with my principal and set up a meeting with her, my dad, and the teacher. The next week at school, I heard on the intercom before break that Mrs. Karen was to head to the office for a meeting. I was grinning the entire time. When lunch ended, she pulled me outside the classroom and told me that my parents came. She was crying and her voice was shaky. I got home later that day and asked my dad what the freak happened and he said to me that he could only describe it as good cop, bad cop, my mother being the bad cop. Needless to say, I didn't have many problems with Mrs. Karen for the rest of the year and I can now confidently say that whenever I have school issues, I will definitely tell my mother. Hearing stories about supportive parents when it comes to school stuff is amazing. It's so nice to hear stories of parents who aren't afraid of marching up to that school, telling the administration off, or even telling the teacher to their face off. I feel like most places, most schools, they don't really fight back too hard against the parents. So when you're actually getting mistreated and one parent is willing to stand up for you, it usually turns out pretty well and it's always fun to hear. Our next story is from Drumroll Please. We removed their porta potties, so they destroyed our bathroom. So I have a story of some revenge slash biological warfare, except I wasn't the one doing it, I was one of the targets. I was on a construction project a few years back with a different company than I work at now. I was a part of the management team overseeing the GC doing the work. Not high enough to make any real decisions, but still had to wear a tie everyday level. About halfway through the four-year job, we had to work on the area where the worker porta potties were located and had to move them. Except instead, my company decided to save some money and just get rid of them. They told the workers to use the other ones on the far end of the site, a solid 10 minutes walk away. When they complained and said we were impacting their work schedule and probably breaking some regulations, my company said they could use the bathroom in our trailer nearby. What could only be described as biological warfare started immediately. Every morning, a dozen big, burly, linebacker-looking workers would come into our bathroom and utterly destroy the toilet. It was a sight trailer with horrible ventilation and no sewer connection, just a poo tank. You can't imagine the smell. They even made sure we knew it was on purpose, too. Some would walk into the trailer and announce what their dinner was the night before, Taco Bell, Indian, etc. Then they'd compete over who took the smelliest poo each day and cheer before leaving us to gag all day. We worked with all the windows open and the doors closed. One guy wore a mask long before COVID. It lasted over a month before it finally came to a head. Upper management didn't care until they started having to pay way more to empty the tank near daily. Only then did they okay us putting in more porter potties. I've been on a lot of crappy projects, but not as literal as that one. This is definitely one of those situations where it's like, oh, it only affects you guys? 
well, we can't envision ourselves in that situation, and we wouldn't be down there with you guys suffering, so you're just gonna have to work through it. And then they only start caring when it really does only start affecting them. This next story is from AJM3232. Be a jerk to me and fire me for not being a cultural fit? Okay, I'll tell my current employer not to conduct business with you. So long ago, this was my second real job as a junior slash mid web developer at a marketing company. Pay was okay at the time, but the work culture as a whole was very stubborn. And I found it very difficult to work with anyone in my circle. Everyone else in copyright, analytics, graphic design was super fun to work with and got along perfectly well. I know I'm not perfect either, but the employees found every little reason to report me to the boss. I was called out to fix my parking because I was parked at a 5 degree angle. Even though the person next to me had plenty of room to get out still, I also requested we use Git for our version control and start isolating our developer environments, but was told this was counterproductive and would not be listened to on anything. One day, without warning, my boss calls me into the office and tells me I'm not a cultural fit and fires me on the spot. After applying to a few places, my old coworker calls me to let me know my old boss was complaining about me because I used him as a reference and told me to only use him instead. The coworker was actually a nice dude, but felt like he didn't really play the role as supervisor that well and got pressured from his peers instead of actually trying to fix conflicts directly. Fast forward a few years, I started a new company as a software engineer. Our company was looking for a marketing company, and here comes my old marketing job asking us if they want them to handle our online advertising. I shut that marketing company down in a heartbeat and let my employer know how stubborn and crap talking the boss was. My company at the time was inches away from signing them up, felt pretty darn good blocking them from a potential client. Honestly, this is why when you're in an industry where business can kind of circle around, you don't want to really get on bad terms with anybody that could continue to stay inside that circle or bubble. You piss somebody off, they move somewhere else, maybe they get into a position where they can call some shots. All of a sudden, you might need or want to network with that company, but the person in that position to network with is the one you treated like a total jerk. Our next story is from Sunshot Destiny. Well, thank you for the free clothes. Apparently, I have someone in my apartment complex that's trying to sneak in their clothes with other people. It happened a few months ago, but I chalked it up to a kid being dumb since it was a kid's clothes and towel. But today, I found a whole extra load of women's clothing mixed in with my own. And unless that kid had a serious growth spurt and grew a decent chest in six months, I couldn't make the same excuse. I had to wait a while though, as I discovered this just before having to run out the door to do errands like school. By the time I got back, I had to figure out what to even do about it all. I eventually ended up sorting it out, and while the woman was smaller than me in stature, some of her clothes would still be something that would fit me. Though I bagged the underwear, I'm not wearing another woman's undergarments and I don't think Charity takes them, because that's where the clothing that doesn't fit me is going. Maybe this was a gift from a random stranger, but... If it isn't, maybe they'll think twice before trying to be so cheap as to mix in their laundry with someone else's. I don't know what their end game was, but it'll end with them donating to a good cause. How much are these washing machines? Like, dollars at most? And that's probably the big industrial ones where like you have to put like heavy comforter blankets in. All I'm saying is, you would have to be in a seriously bad way if you have to resort to putting your clothes in with other strangers' clothing in a washing machine. Our next story is from Slevin's wife, future landlord Petty Revenge. We live in a state that has just an awful housing market. We managed to buy our house a few years ago after looking and being outbid on multiple properties. It was a bit of a fixer-upper, but not too bad, and it was in a nice neighborhood, so we were thrilled. No plans to move in for at least 10 years, so we got to work on different projects and have really made this house a home. Last week, we got a letter in the mail from someone living a few cities over. The letter basically said, We aren't a real estate, we're just looking to get into the rental market and want to buy your house so we can then rent it out. They included an offer in the letter, $50,000 below market rate, justified by them that it's okay because we won't use realtors and they're a family trying to make income on rental. I am annoyed for two reasons. One, 
How the heck are we supposed to buy another house if we're getting below market value for ours? Two, you want me to sell you my home so you can rent it out to someone else for probably way too much? In a housing shortage? When it's already hard for people to buy a home? Pass. Pass on all of it. But as it seems they need help buying houses, and they so kindly gave me their phone number and email address, I went ahead and signed them up for every predatory mortgage lenders list I could find. I also set their location for EST or PST, so they'll be getting 6am phone calls for the next few weeks until they get off everyone's list. It's silly and very petty, but made me feel a lot better. You would just imagine that if somebody's going to try to correspond with you and try to ask if you can sell your house to them, that they would be trying to offer you a good deal for your house, not a crappy deal. You're seriously going to call somebody up, say that you're going to do a landlord type situation and then lowball them? Why even deal with that? You might as well go through a realtor and get a better price if you're going to sell the house. If you proposition somebody to sell a house and they weren't intending to sell it, you can't lowball them. Our next story is from 2Sam22, no Wi-Fi. Just today, my wife and I are retired. We work camp for seven months of the year and spend winters in Mexico. We're the lead hosts. For those of that don't know what work camping is, one works in an RV park for space and utilities and possibly wages for a predetermined amount of the year. The checkout time here for RVs is 11 a.m. For another $10, you can stay until 1 p.m., but then you have to leave so we can clean and prep the site for the next customer at 2 p.m., or you're charged for another day whether you stay or not. The park we're in had a guy and his husband come in for five days. They wanted to stay late because the husband half is working and needed our Wi-Fi. No problem. Please hand over $10 for the extra two hours. You would have thought we were asking Fort Knox for a gold bar. Called us rude for even asking, entitled Californians. Sorry, it's in the rules you checked as having read to book the site. One of the owners, they're on vacation. Give me their phone number. No, but we'll have them contact you. Meanwhile, I accidentally bumped off the Wi-Fi for the camp. Everyone else is out enjoying the sights and weather. Knock, knock, knock. What happened to the Wi-Fi? I say, is it off? Looking at my phone, which is Verizon and has no issue here. By gosh, it is. Let me check the office. I'll be right back. Yep, it's off. I have to call in a provider. They told me they'll check on it and either call me back or send a repairman. Three and a half hour drive, one way. We're in the middle of nowhere. So as they sit waiting, not being able to work, I'm enjoying a nice cold beer waiting for that call. They could have just packed, left, and parked on the street to access and finish, but no. I know people who've danced around in situations like this, and I'll say the one thing I know is these trailer parks don't play around with their curfew. If you break those rules, they're going to get on you real quick. You better believe their guy in a souped up golf cart will come flying down there to tell you off. And our final story of the day is from Mikey Bonbon 1988 My girlfriend you gets revenge on a coffee shop again. I have another deliciously petty coffee shop story thanks to my girlfriend you. So we went out for a day on the town, and both of us are huge caffeine addicts, three or more a day. It's quickly become our thing to seek out small coffee places all over the city and get our fix. We tend to take turns on who orders. We were up at the counter, ordering, both of us are pretty basic. The boldest brew with oat or rice milk. Lactose intolerance sucks. I miss ice cream. The coffee shop was set up where you ordered at the counter and picked up and paid at the next. Important for later. I put in my order and said my girlfriend would like the same. The girl at the counter said, excuse me, with a frown on her face. And I said, oh, you don't have oat milk? She said, no, what you said is wrong. I look at her with a puzzled stare on my face. I say, um, what? She said, it's partner, not girlfriend. That's rude. I just said, okie dokie, but yeah, my girlfriend would like... The girl at the counter actually scoffed at me and gave an eye roll and said, that's really rude. Seriously, like what the freak? Right at this point, you gives me an elbow nudge. I look at her and she said, don't worry, I got this. You said, yeah, Michael, that's rude. And does that teeth sucking thing I freaking hate so much. Now I'm so confused. I have no idea what's going wrong. What have I done wrong? You puts her order in, the most complicated nonsensical order I've ever seen. 
This was yesterday, so I'll do my best to recreate it in words. You said she wanted a large bowl with three shots of espresso cocoa powder, oat milk, cane sugar, non-dairy creamer, fresh whipped cream, cinnamon with blended foamed whole milk. Well, the girl at the counter had to write the order down and goes to make it. She gets to work assembling this monstrosity of a hot beverage. And we're standing behind the two counters, and you can see the girl's utter frustration about this drink that nightmares are made of. When you saw that her order was nearing completion, she gave me another light elbow to my side and whispered to me, quick, let's get out of here. So yeah, we turned tail and walked out the door, and as it shut behind me, I swear I could hear the girl in the shop loudly say, son of a witch. I really don't think that was a very woke thing to say. So yeah, this is when I realized I'm absolutely madly in love with you. I'm all for tolerance and accepting of others, regardless of differences, but I think it's a little ridiculous trying to attack the merit of using the terms girlfriend or boyfriend. I would argue that that's a almost very personal title, a title that is decided upon by the people in that relationship and you can't assume things. If you're going to say to somebody's face, oh, you can't use boyfriend or girlfriend, that's inappropriate, that's really rude. I'd say that's almost as bad as intentionally misgendering somebody. Like saying they can't say boyfriend or girlfriend is essentially telling them to their faces that they can't use whatever label that couple wants to use. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another revenge story that was absolutely crazy, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.